And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Now, you all know I like Catacombs. It's a very big game. It comes in a very giant box, a dexterity-style game. And I was very happy to get the first expansion. I'm assuming it's the first. Caverns of Sola, which looks really small, but really the amount of content here is good. I mean, really, you don't need the box anymore anyway. You can just get rid of this and put everything in the main box because the main box is that big. This adds more stuff. More heroes, more monsters, more rooms, more items. That's all we wanted, right? Right! Let's look at it. First, let's take a look at the new heroes that are involved in this game. And by the way, this game, this expansion comes with a whole pile of more components, which you've already seen, to use for all these different heroes. But let's take a look at the heroes now. First, we have Zachalin, the Witch Hunter. Now, he's a very unique character because he has his own weapons. He has a skeleton hand, which protects him from fire and range attacks and melee attacks. It's an ability you can use once per round. But how do you get the skeleton hand? Well, essentially, he has to use monsters to craft these items. So you see this one here says, destroy three monsters. So after he's destroyed three monsters and gets the money for them, he can say, okay, I'm using these three monsters to put out the skeleton hand. But perhaps he'd rather have a ranged attack by destroying two, or destroy three to get this, this double fireball, or to destroy four to get a melee and then a range, or to destroy two to get... Um, to reflect a ranged attack back at somebody else, or be immune to poison by destroying two, or to hit and then do a critical hit. He's probably going to be one that a lot of people are going to want to play just because of the diversity. Now, he doesn't start off good at all. You're going to have to kill some monsters first and then decide which of these abilities to take. Now, kind of on the opposite end of the board, we have Urselu, who is the centaur warrior. He has no special abilities, can't take any weapons either or spells, but... He comes with a range attack that he can use all the time. It's really useful. This is a, a character everyone's going to want. Just a guy who just consistently shoots ranged and doesn't have to worry about anything else. Not going to be able to upgrade him much, but just straight out useful. Then we have Beeble. I love his name. The, uh, the dwarf. The dwarf miner who has nine hit points and has some special rules when you take him as an ally. But he comes with the throwing axe, which was in the original game. And this is useful as a combo item, so being able to, uh, and you can use this once per, per room, so he moves in the room, attacks, throws his axe, and so on and so forth. Then we have Katrine, the Ice Princess, who comes with two ice blasts that she can use over the course in each room, which is really useful. The ice blast is no small thing to throw at people. And she's also protected against fire, which is odd. I would have thought she'd be vulnerable to fire, but what do I know? The cold never bothered her anyway. So then we have Hanley. Oh, you want a tank? You have a tank now. Hanley comes with 11 hit points and two Imperial Armors. So twice per battle he can cancel a regular attack, a ranged, um, the targeting, or a fire attack. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Send him up to take up all the damage. And then finally we have Visara, the Sorceress. She comes with the spell that lets her switch two people and also... She has a critical ranged attack and then can move, although she can't pick up any weapons. So those are the heroes. Let's take a look at some villains now. Ah, oh, the Phoenix. Man, you're going to really hate this guy. The Phoenix cannot be killed. In fact, if you do kill it by accident, it comes back to life, full health, until every other creature in the room has been killed. So, eh. Then we have the Siren, who is has a new thing here. This is called suppression. You'll notice on the side of her card. That suppression means that until you kill her, those attacks can't be used in that room. Uh, this guy also has suppression, and he's going to be summoning skeleton warriors and leeching your life. Uh, this guy is going to be devouring people. Another one of those guys. The wyvern has some different attacks that he can do with poison. You'll notice there's several poison. These take, make you take two poison cards. No one likes the venomous spider. Uh, 
and we got a white and a dread scorpion and a lizard man and a savage centaur. So there's really quite a few different uh, creatures and these aren't even all of them. Let me show you the big ones. All right, first we have the Hydra. Now the Hydra is one of the main enemies the Catacomb Lord you can fight against. Bring some characters with it. The Infernal Acolyte, which has a movable shield and a gargoyle. And the special ability of the Hydra is that as the weaker the Hydra gets, I'm sorry, not the weaker, the more hit points that it loses, the stronger it gets. You can see here at the end, when it's down to its last hit points, it's doing a, a normal hit and then two critical hits. So it's just going crazy. You know, when you cut off one head, you create two more. Then we have the Queen of the Underworld. Looks cool too um, on the picture. And she just basically has a plethora of different attacks that she can do. Uh, so she, basically, with her, it's just about variety. Not to mention, she can summon uh, whites. Then we have Thagu, the orc war chief. And there's lots of new orc creatures in the game the orc wo a wolf rider, the swamp orc, the rust monster, which everyone hates. But Thagu's cool thing is he has this attack or this ability here, when he hits somebody with this uh, marker here, that symbol there, they get to go again, it's called a repeat shot. So when he hits somebody with that repeat shot, they can basically take their turn again. Very annoying and gives him a lot of power. Then we have this Frolvuth, the shapeshifter, who there's a shade and a flame salamander, and basically he can summon a whole pile of different creatures switch people, and then make an attack. So that's kind of a pain in the neck. Fortunately, it's not all bad. The heroes have some good stuff. They have Mariah's Urn here, which summons this nasty creature for one battle. I would assume you're going to save it for the last battle, but well, I know. And then there's the Sylvan Arrow Barrage. You'll notice some really cool equipment here. Just sadness that you probably won't be able to afford it half the time, or only be able to get one of them. Or the Vampire Sword. Oh, have that ability to get a hit point back whenever you hit somebody. Yeah, you know you want that. The Warhammer. The Iron Crown. A Mirror Shield. Uh, the Phoenix Feather. I like this one a lot. Basically, when you get killed, you come back to life. Now, it costs 12, though. Gauntlets. An Ice Sword. Acolyte's Tomb. Notice the Ice Sword really does well with your Ice Princess there. Because she can hit with it a critical hit and move. A Cursed Scroll. When you play this card, it remains in effect for the rest of the room, but you can cancel everything or suppress things quickly. Um, wands and hammers, and these, you'll notice there are some more of the combo items, which let you do extra stuff. All right, well, then the game comes with just tons and tons of rooms. Zeros, ones, and two rooms, and it's mostly just to have all the new monsters in the game with these rooms. It also comes with the Altar of Soloth. The Altar of Soloth is like a new store where you pay five coins, Turn over the top item, it's yours if you want it. If you don't, discard it, pay five more coins and do it again. So it's kind of like a random thing. They should have called it the Lottery of Soloth. And that's what's in the set. I think what I like the best here is just the more variety it gives. Having more heroes is great. I think there's like, like 10 different heroes to pick from now, 11 heroes or 12. There's a lot of heroes. That gives people a lot of variety. And I, the, my two favorite are the first two I showed you. The one who can craft his own stuff because that gives him that diversity and the guy who just can shoot stuff. That's it. I like both of them. For, like, they're the total opposite of the spectrums, but that's good. Now, it doesn't really matter. I don't often play the, the guy, the, the heroes anyway. I'm playing the monsters, so there. <laughs> oh, thank you, creators of the game, for giving me such great monsters to play with. I can bring out diverse monsters in every room. And I think that's probably my favorite part, is you're not fighting the same monsters all the time. Yeah, you had skeletons in that room, now you're fighting orcs. Now you're fighting this giant spider. Now you're gonna fight guys with flames, and they have these big flame tokens, basically flame walls that you can put up, and I really like those too in the game. There's just a lot of cool things. The new items are amazing items, but they're very expensive. You won't see them in many games. And the new dungeon lords get, man, you're gonna have a different experience every time you play now. You know, I said this was the first expansion. I don't know if they'll ever make another expansion, but it doesn't really matter, right? There's so much that's in this box. There's so much in the original game. And now they've, they've I won't say they've doubled the content, but it feels like they've doubled the content. There's just a lot more cool things, a lot more creatures, more heroes. 
And I think that, you know, if they never made anything else, I'd be completely satisfied. This is a pile of great stuff here. This is one of my favorite dexterity games. Still remains that way. Having more stuff, I love it. Dice Tower Judgment, it's in my collection. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! <laughs>